Pharmacies like Walgreens and CVS have had to limit the amount of emergency contraception purchases like Plan B following the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We should have expected that, right? When we take uh, uh, reproductive health rights away from women and uh, they use Plan B and they hear legislators and I think uh, people that are running for governor, not me, uh, saying that they want to stop that from allowing that to happen, I can understand why they stockpile. Some think that's all because it's a common misconception. It's another step to prevent the fertilized egg from getting implanted in the uterus. Uh, you have a three-day window uh, to do it, so it is an, another option. It does work um, at a pretty high success rate, about 70 to 80 percent, uh, if taken within three days. Um, it doesn't, you know, if, if there is a pregnancy in place, it doesn't interf interfere or, or doesn't impact uh, an existing pregnancy. Even so, emergency contraception like Plan B and birth control pills have been flying off the shelves. At Smith Pharmacy in Little Shoot, they haven't quite seen that demand, but prepared anyway. We, we stockpiled it a little more than what we normally would carry. Smith Pharmacy says it hasn't limited the purchase of emergency contraception or birth control, but is prepared to if it should come to that. Once our wholesaler um, has limited supply, then we would probably limit the purchasing, uh, purchasing of it or the, the purchases of it. Um, but right now, um, there's an ample supply and we do not plan on limiting at, at this point, but that could change in the future. And while some across the country are fearful of their rights to birth control or emergency contraception being taken away, in Wisconsin, the governor at least isn't prepared to bar that anytime soon. So I know there are some that want to uh, prohibit it, but uh, uh, they'd have to pass a law and, uh, and I would veto that. 41 new grants will soon be distributed as part of the Wisconsin Coastal Management Program. Projects that will receive funding include Kiwani County well water testing and improvements to Olson Park in Algoma. Governor Tony Evers says the projects will have a long-term effect on Wisconsin's communities. These grants are enormously, they're not enormous in, in size, I mean, they're, but they're enormously popular because uh, I've been doing this for almost four years now and uh, and they're very popular, but even with that, what it does is that it brings communities together to solve specific problems. Evers says the grants will tackle a number of other issues, including restoring habitats and creating new educational opportunities for future generations. He hopes to accomplish these goals while also addressing pollution. He also addressed doubts regarding climate change. And yes, uh, climate change is a real thing, uh, and people that even don't believe in climate change or like to use that term, uh, they see how excessive rain and, and storms impact uh, their lives. Whether Event speakers and community members shared their excitement for the grants. Algoma Public Works Director Matt Murphy says $30,000 will help with the work that has been planned in Algoma. We were able to start our phase one to remove our current snow dump where it currently is down at Olson Park on a gravel parking pad and able to take this funding and start the first phase and turning Olson Park back into a physical park. The Wisconsin Historical Society is getting nearly $17,000. Tamara Thompson says the money will help monitor the long-term preservation of underwater cultural here. resources. The information gathered in this grant will be used to expand the state's maritime education initiatives and tourism initiatives and grow uh, greater user group participation by boaters and paddlers. The alligator that was found is currently with the JNR Aquatic Animal Rescue. Its director believes it was a pet that escaped from its owner. We are going to be holding this guy for about a week. Um, after that, we are going to try to place him into a uh, sanctuary where he can live out his days outdoors. DNR amphibian and reptile biologist Rory Pulaski typically only gets one report a year of an alligator in Wisconsin. They're definitely not naturally occurring. They're not native to Wisconsin. They are always going to be either captive um, escaped pets or captive release pets. Experts say the chances of an alligator surviving a Wisconsin winter is very unlikely. Their thermal to tolerance in Arkansas is about the furthest north that they can um, that they can survive with cold winters. Now, are alligators an invasive species? There's kind of two terms we use for species like this. One is non-native and one is invasive. 
So for the alligator, I would classify them as non-native. Being a, not a native species to Wisconsin, they shouldn't be here. They're not part of our natural landscape. Alligators are able to live in the Midwest in controlled environments. Hey, Carmen Murak, a curator of animals at the new zoo, ensures their alligator Lucky is in good hands. Lucky has an indoor space that he goes to for the winter. Um, he's able, his pool is heated, so uh, we're able to extend his season, get him out here early, earlier in the spring and later in the fall, even when we're getting some nights that um, it's hitting freezing. Alligators eat fish, birds, small mammals, and anything else that gets too close. Pulaski says people should do their research before buying an alligator as a pet. Really think about if you're going to have the capability to keep that animal for a long period of time.